Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is longest palindrome in a string and it is a medium level problem. So the problem is uh, like not very difficult but uh, initially I misread the problem. I thought that we had to find the longest subsequence but you have to be very careful that it is asking for the longest substring, right. So basically we have been given a string S and we have to find the longest palindromic substring, right. So substring you must understand that if you are talking about the substring and all the characters that we take must be present together, right. They should be consecutive characters and it should be a palindrome as well. So by palindrome uh, you must already know that a palindrome is a string which is same if we write it forward or backwards, right. For example, A, B, B, A is a palindrome because even if you write forward or backwards it is the same. Now they say there is one more important condition that in case if there is a conflict then we have to return the substring which occurs first, right or which has the least starting index. So this is also that we need to take care of. So let us uh, have a look how we can solve this problem and also take this particular sample test case. So basically a question has been given to us like this, right. So this is our uh, initial input string. Now uh, I have told you and I will again give you an example of a palindrome. So a palindrome example is for example A, B, B, A. Because if I write start writing it from backwards then also it is going to be ABB, right. So both of these strings are going to be the same. This is called a palindrome and a substring is a string from this original string S such that we take any consecutive characters, right. So we are going to have a look uh, like what can be the answer for this particular test case and they say that it is going to be A, A, B, B, A, right. So basically this particular substring, right. So you will see that all the characters that we are taken are consecutive characters. I also tell you if the same question was asking about subsequence then A, 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 A. This would also have been a possible answer because in a subsequence it is not necessary to take consecutive characters and then we could have taken this first character, then second character, third, fourth, we would have ignored fifth and sixth and then we would have taken seven and eight, right. So this way we could have formed this particular answer. But since we want to take a substring, we cannot skip characters in between and we have to take consecutive characters only, right. So the value of n in this particular question is up to 10 to the power 3 and it allows us to form an O of n square solution, right, in terms of time. So like whenever you see a string and you see a substring and you see n square together, that means it is very well possible for you to form all possible substrings and check the best among them, right. So, so these two keywords, whenever you look together, the first keyword is substring and the second keyword is n square complexity, right. Whenever you have these two together, that means definitely you can form and try all the possible substrings. But I will tell you uh, like uh, what is the problem if you directly try to form the substrings. For example, if you have like two for loops i0n and j0n, let us say this is the, the two for loops that we have. So let me just write it down what are each of these. So let i denote the starting index, starting index and let j denote the length of the substring that we want to consider, right. So these are the two things that we have. Now among these, if you try to form a loop like this, then at each step we will get a substring, right. So for example, here I have got a substring. Another thing is to check whether this substring is a palindrome or not is also a O of n operation. So the overall complexity of this approach will become n cube, which is not acceptable and we want it to be n square. So this particular method will obviously not work. So let us have a look at method 2. So this is another method with which you can solve this particular problem. Now you see, uh, if we try to consider a, a string, right. So let us say these are two characters. These were adjacent characters in the original string S. Now what I can do is if these two characters are present, that means it is a palindrome, palindrome of length 2, right. Now if the adjacent characters to them, for example, the left character to this one and the right character to this one, they are also same. That means it has now become a palindrome of length 4, right. So I can write 4 here now. Again, I can expand it further to make it a palindrome 
then 6. So this now becomes 6. And I can keep on doing this till this whole condition is dissatisfied. That is either my pointer goes out of bounds. For example, this is my start of the string and my pointer goes here or my right pointer goes beyond the end of the string. Right? Either this condition is fulfilled or the s of l, let's say l and r are pointers, is not equal to s of r. Right? This can be the condition when we cannot expand further. Right? So what we did was we took up initial point, starting point, and we took its adjacent character. Right? So these two characters must be palindrome in each in each other if they are equal. Right? Now I try to expand it, and I check whether these two characters are equal or not. If they are equal, again I can expand my range. And now this particular string becomes a palindrome of length 4. I can again expand it by making the total string a palindrome of length 6. Right. And I can only expand it. There are two conditions that they should be in the bounds and the character should be same. So let me just write it more formally. And there is also one more thing about this approach that I need to tell you. So uh, let L and R be the left and right pointers respectively right now what we need to do is move move l one step left and r one step right keep keep increasing length of palindrome by 2 right and repeat above steps only when the following two conditions are satisfied. Right, we have two conditions for it, and those conditions are that L, L and R should be in bounds for string S, and S of L should be equal to S of R. Right, so these are all the conditions that we need to take care of. So I'll repeat it again. What we essentially have is we have certain conditions. What we try to do, we took two pointers L and R, right? Two adjacent pointers. So what we need to do is we will move the L to one step left and R to one step right, right? And since there are two consecutive characters, we will keep increasing the length of the palindrome by two, right? So these are the two things that we need to do, and we will only do it if certain conditions are satisfied. What are those conditions? First of all, L and R should be in bounds for the string S. That means they should not be out of bounds and they should be valid indexes for the string S and S of L is equal to S of R. Right. So what we are essentially doing is we are trying to form the palindrome form between. Right. We are considering that two equal strings are going to be a palindrome anyways and we are trying to expand it like this. Right. Now there is one more important thing that you need to take care of. What if the best answer is a palindrome of length odd? Right. So here what we did was we took two characters and we tried to expand and each time you will observe that the length of the string is increasing by 2. Right. So it is going to be an even size palindrome. What if the size of the final palindrome or the best palindrome is an odd number? So in that particular case what I would do is I would initialize my uh, answer with a single character only and then I will set my left pointer here and my right pointer here. Right. So in the first case we initialize our answer with 0. And we had two, two characters in beginning, right? And we then we check these two conditions. Now what we do is we take one character, we initialize our answer with one, and then we add two characters, one to the left and one to the right. Now the same process is followed. We try to keep expanding it. And in this case, you will see that we are adding two characters each time and one character was initially. So it will it is always going to be 2n plus 1 where n is any integer, right? So this is going to be an odd number. So this is how we can deal both even and odd cases. So this was all about like today's problem of the day and let me just show you the code how we can actually implement it. Now I have taken an integer n to be the size of the string and I want to inform you that uh, I have changed the input. Initially it was given capital S, I have changed it to small s and in case like uh, this code doesn't work for you, like please check it like that you have taken the same character as the function argument that has been passed, right. So what I do is I mark my start as n and answer as 0. So answer is basically going to store the length of the longest substring and start is going to store what is the starting index of that particular substring. Right. Now I have, I have two cases. The, so the first case that is starting from here is this is for odd case. Odd case. Right. And uh, what I do is 
I mark my left pointer as i minus 1 and right pointer as i plus 1. So, the element at position i or the character at position i is going to be the center of the palindrome, right? So, that is why I have one pointer at i minus 1 and one pointer as i plus 1. Now, I initialize my answer with 1 and I have certain conditions. So, there are actually two conditions. This is the first condition that we talked about that L and R are inbounds for the string S. So, if L is greater than minus 1 and R is less than n, right? And this is the second condition that s of l should be equal to s of r. So, if these two are satisfied, I will increment my answer with 2 and I will update the value of r and l respectively. So, r will go one step to the right and l will go one step to the left. Now, if my current answer that I have tried to form is greater than my answer, that I, then I will update my answer as current answer and I will update my start as l plus 1. Why is this l plus 1? So, l is the first position at which my substring becomes invalid. Right. Remember this term. L is the first position at which my substring becomes invalid. So, definitely till L plus 1 everything was well and good. That is why my starting index should be L plus 1 and not L. Because at L the substring has become invalid at it and it is not valid anymore. So, I need to take the last valid string and that was starting from L plus 1. Right. And if C and if the current answer is equal to the answer itself, then I have to check whether my starting index is better than my already starting index. Right. So, that means if I have found a better starting index, in that case, I will update my starting index. So, obviously, this is also going to be L plus 1 for the same reason that L is the first position at which my substring becomes invalid. So, I need to take L plus 1. Right. So, this is the even case when the size of the substring or the size of the longest palindromic substring is going to be even. Now, what I do is I start my L with i minus 1 and r with i. Right. So, I am taking two characters. I am initializing my current answer with 0. And again, the exact same conditions, it is the exact same for loop that I have written above. Now, what I do is, again, the same conditions, if current answer is greater than answer, then I will update my answer and update my start. Otherwise, if both of them are equal and the new index that I have formed is smaller than the previous index and I will update my starting index. So, at the end, I know the starting index, I know the length of the substring, I can just directly return s dot substring starting from the starting position and with the length of answer. Right. So, this is going to be the solution of today's problem of the day. Let me just quickly submit it and show that this particular solution works. So, you see that it passes all the test cases. And yeah, this was all about today's problem of the day. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. And I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. So if you are one of them, consider subscribing. It's always free of course and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.